Howdy guys and gals, my name is Kyle Broderick, welcome to The Social Regressive. We have done sound tests in the past where we wanted to hear what incoming rounds would actually sound like shot through a silenced rifle. So we have this, uh, this AR right here with a, a YHM silencer on it, and we tested first some 223 rounds at various ranges, everything from I think 25 yards out to 600 yards, to hear what that sounded like, to see if maybe the, the sound of the rifle would disappear at a certain point, and depending on the terrain and conditions, yeah, actually sometimes we kind of lost the sound of the rifle itself. The bullet always made that supersonic crack, so there's always a really loud sound. And uh, we did the, the same test with 6.5 Creedmoor right here, and we've done some different tests with the CCI subsonics that you see right here. These are a, a 40 grain bullet moving out at about 1,050 feet per second. So these are subsonics even from the muzzle, and yes, they are very, very quiet, but one of the interesting things that we found is that as we started to step things back to about 75 yards, 100 yards, and then even further out, we found that Hollywood pew sound that people thought was a myth. Uh, that sound actually does exist. It probably was recorded by a Foley artist, and people have just been misusing it in the movies to you know, try to make it seem like that's the sound of a, a suppressed 9mm at 5 feet or something. And no, it seems like that's when a bullet starts to really slow down at some of the longer ranges. One of the biggest requests that I've had is to shoot a subsonic 223. And, you know, how is that actually different from a subsonic 22? Uh, well, for one thing, we're going to get a heavier bullet. There's going to be more mass behind it, and it's going to be a slicker bullet. So the sound could possibly be different. We're going to find out today. Uh, thanks a bunch to my patrons of the Destructive Arts for helping to make tests like this possible. It's you guys that allow me to, uh, you know, pick up some of the goodies that we're using. This round right here uses 5.3 grains of Hodgdon Trail Boss. And this is using that same bullet that I used in the supersonic test, a 75 grain boat tail hollow point. Very slick, very efficient. I think this has a ballistic coefficient of 0.4 if I remember correctly. So this is definitely going to bring a lot more heat than this. And it is going to be moving out a little bit faster. This moves out at 1,080 feet per second rather than the 1050 that you get with these uh, subsonic HPs right here. And these are, uh, this is really good ammunition, by the way. I'm going to break this out into another video at some point. So again, uh, thank you, patrons of the Destructive Arts. Thank you, Denver Loveless, especially. Um, he's my 300 Wind Mag patron. But uh, let's go find out what this sounds like. Let's get out on the range. <laughs> that is sweet. That is sweet. <clears throat> and yeah, you'll have to manually rack it each time. Did it go in? Yeah, but it didn't, it didn't eject one out. It didn't? Uh-uh. I was wondering what that button was on the side. I got one in my pocket. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. It didn't eject? No. No, it won't. Even when it's warm out, it won't. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I believe it was a hit. That sounded weird. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Phil. a little low. A little low? I think so. Tenfold? Here, where were you aiming? Uh, a little high. Oh, nice hit. Yeah. That was a hit. It's 
so funny. I have plenty of time to roll focus. Those things are so slow. <laughs> <laughs> Dang glove. So how's everybody feeling? Cold! I'm sick of this heat. <laughs> Dang. It's so hot outside. It's so hot. There you go. That's a rock for me. <laughs> This is a little low. Dang. About three inches, wasn't it? I think oh. that was a hit. Got it. This is a little low. Dang. Hit. Was it? Bottom corner. One more. Yeah. I didn't hear it either. I didn't either. No, I can fall up. Hey. Hit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just barely click it. <laughs> I thought yeah. I saw it. I'm like, what? Yeah. Got it. I see it. Thank you. That is hard off your knee, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Berm. Yeah. To the right. Oh, the berm? Yeah. Is that B E R M? It clicked the berm. It clicked the berm. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Whatever it hit was solid. I think he hit it. <laughs> Good shot. Good shot. Has a lot to do with the scope and the gun too. Okay, now, Jesse, I want you to explain to all the, the folks out there how much of a pacifist you are, and then explain your pants. <laughs> <laughs> a pacifist? <laughs> oh, about the chicken deer. Yes, I see deer. I eat, I eat, and I kill. Uh, and I love it. So, uh, and to explain the pants, uh, that'll explain it. The pacifist. Uh, uh, it's natural meat. It's good meat. And I'll do it until I'm, I'm not here anymore. I'll eat plenty of venison. Pretty interesting. We found that Hollywood pew sound again. Now this time, it seems to be kind of kicking in when the rifle is a little bit further back than with the 22s. With the 22s, I could start hearing the sound at about 75 yards, and then back by 150 yards, it was very pronounced. With this 223 subsonic, it seems to be kind of kicking in a little bit further back and getting a, a bit more noticeable at further ranges in the 22. And this could just have to do with, it, it seems to be a product of a certain speed of the bullet. It needs to be moving pretty slow to get this sound. Um, with the 223 here, we have a little bit of extra muzzle velocity and it is a more efficient projectile, so it's not going to be moving as slow as that 22 uh, at various ranges. It's just going to be a lot slicker. 
Um, but yeah, we're going to continue testing with this. We're going to do some 6.5 Creedmoor subsonics, and we're going to hear what those sound like. I'm kind of curious to know if it is, you know, at a certain velocity that that pew starts to appear. Uh, maybe if it's something to do with the shape of the projectile, because, you know, this is a hollow point. This is kind of a hollow point. The, it's a BTHP. It's a, you know, pretty small aperture. But I am kind of curious to figure out where that sound is coming from. Now, let's talk real quick about purpose and about performance. A subsonic 22, this is going to be pretty effective at short range on small game. Uh, why in the world would you want to make a 223 subsonic? Uh, it seems like it's kind of a waste of a lot of case capacity and a lot of the potential performance that you could get out of this. And I do see this as being a functional thing, something that could be pretty useful actually, especially if you have a rifle like the Mossberg MVP or something else that's magazine fed and especially bolt action. Uh, it was kind of annoying to fire these 223 subsonics out of an AR because every single time we have to, you know, rack things again to kick out the empty, there's just not enough. Uh, uh, enough powder, not enough blast coming back to actually move that bolt carrier backward and kick out the round. Uh, everything just stays locked up. So it's very manual and it kind of makes the, the rifle loud because you know you have to jack everything back and you either let it go and make it really loud or you have to use the forward assist. Uh, it's, it's kind of annoying. But if you do have a um, uh, a bolt action rifle, I think it's uh, probably a kind of neat idea, especially if you have a survival rifle. So you can very, very quietly take game. It's going to be uh, more efficient, like I mentioned, with these projectiles than uh, a 22. And I can see how if you did have a 223 survival rifle, you know, something that you intend to be able to kind of live off the land or whatever with, uh, I think it'd be smart to have a magazine loaded up with these things just because of that quietness factor. But let's take a look at the uh, ballistics here, and we're going to see just how inefficient this cartridge is. Let's start this conversation by talking about energy. This is my supersonic 223 load. At 25 yards, it's moving out faster than 2,500 feet per second, and it's producing over 1,000 foot-pounds of energy. And that's going to be almost four times as much as I get out of a 115 grain 9 millimeter bullet from my pocket pistol. So you can see why even a small rifle round like this one uh, can be very effective, even at longer ranges. Now by contrast, this is the subsonic 22, that's a 40 grain bullet. Let's see how much energy this thing produces. 98 at the muzzle. So that's less than a tenth of the energy of that uh, faster 223. That is very, very low. This is all less than 100 uh, foot-pounds of energy at all these ranges. Look at this. So let's take a look at the subsonic 223 and see if we can kind of split the difference a little bit. Okay, yes. Even at 25 yards here, we're still over double the energy that we got from the uh, the 22. So that's a good reason to do a, a, sub, a subsonic 223 versus maybe a, a 22. Uh, this thing is going to deliver a lot more energy just because you have that bigger, heavier bullet. And then look at this. Even at 600 yards, I'm still producing 112 foot-pounds of energy, which is more than that 22 ever developed, even at the muzzle. To throw that subsonic 223 into stark relief, let's take a look at the supersonic chart here. And we only start getting into those speeds and energy levels once we get past 900 yards on the 223 chart. Energy is only part of this equation. Also take drop into account. Over here with the 223 subsonic, at 200 yards we're dealing with a drop of about 5.8 milliradians and we're dealing with windage at five miles an hour of about 0.4 milliradians. By contrast, the 22 at 200 yards has a drop of about 8.7 milliradians and 1.3, that's almost three times as much windage at 200 yards. So what is a subsonic 223? Is it just a gimmick, a toy, just something you play around with at the range? Yeah, it is, and it is kind of fun. It's really just kind of a hoot to hear the, the almost nothing that comes out of the barrel. It is so darn quiet. 
But uh, it also is, I think, a really neat training tool for being able to read wind if you want to be able to uh, shoot different distances and really be able to test if you're reading your wind right. This is going to be a very finicky thing to deal with and uh, pretty tricky to get on target. It's also going to be, I think, effective for game, like I mentioned earlier, small game. So if you do have that survival rifle and you want to be able to uh, very quietly and cleanly take game, I think this is a really neat uh, cartridge that splits the difference between a supersonic 223 that's going to make a lot of noise and a subsonic 22 that just isn't going to deliver all that much energy. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.